Welcome to this presentation. My name is Agustina and I am a doctoral student in SIMNET. Today, I will share with you an application for the automatic generation of braided stent, which has been developed in Git. The research group, led by Eduardo Soda and Joaquin Hernandez, is currently collaborating with a local company called Anaconda Biomed, who is developing a new generation of catheters for the treatment of strokes. This new device is comprised of two coaxial catheters and a clot mobilizer. The delivery catheter allows to reach the damaged neurovascular area, while the funnel allows to block the blood flow for combining the aspiration technique with the clot mobilizer. The funnel is a braided tubular structure with a thin layer of silicon, as you can see in the video. In this slide, we can see how the device should extract the thrombus applying both techniques at the same time. This procedure is currently the most reliable one, but it still needs to be analyzed in order to reduce the risks. Then, for improving the design of the device, in particular the funnel, we need to create the geometries as fast as possible. In this way, Git allows us to do it automatically. Today we are presenting two types of geometries, using beam elements and with three-dimensional wires. The preliminary results of one-dimensional computational models are shared also. In order to understand the application, we need to know the different parameters that influence the braided dexiometry, for instance, the stent length and diameter, the number of wires, the braiding angle, etc. As you can see in the application, we have a set of parameters that we can change. We are showing a stent with different number of wires and with different braiding angle. As mentioned in the previous slide, you can also change the diameter and stent length and the geometry immediately changes. You can create devices with a crimp proximal part specifying both open and crimp radius. The different part of the stent can have different braiding angles in order to obtain the desired geometrical design. Other parameters such as the braiding type and the type of geometrical lines can be set also. The application automatically generates several group of entities for example, the set of wires with clockwise direction or in the opposite direction. This entity makes far easier the procedure of specifying the boundary conditions and loads when creating the computational models. Once you create the stent geometry, you can use it with any solver you want since Git has many options to export both the geometry and the mesh. After running the simulations, Git also provides a powerful post-processor in order to visualize the results and export the output data. There are several tools that can be used in order to obtain the desired information. In our case, we use Kratos for creating the models and for running the simulations. As you can see in this slide, we create a specific application called Stent in order to have all the tools integrated there. The structural application of Kratos is used for these models. As mentioned before, we can easily create the models using the different groups of entities. We provide the data following the tree and impose the loads and boundary conditions. In this example, we are imposing a boundary conditions in the bottom nodes of the stent with simply choosing the appropriate group. After creating these geometries, we use Kratos to impose the loads and boundary conditions and create the computational models for simulating the uniaxial test of the device. The preliminary results are shown in this slide where you can see how the device is elongated. We made tests of different geometrical configurations and it is important to notice that these models have been created almost immediately by using Git. Git allowed us also to create the three-dimensional geometry of the braided wires. Using as path lines the one-dimensional models and performing sweep operations, we could obtain the three-dimensional model of a unit cell of the structure. We used different layers for creating the wires and the silicon. Then we create different reduced order models where we repeated unit cells accounting for the stent. After obtaining the stain barrel partition of the cells, we perform several finite element tests as you can see in this slide. 
We use this training test in order to create a reduced order model based on domain decomposition with a coarse mesh of about 300 elements, far fewer than the 3 million elements of a standard finite intelligent model. Moreover, we use several interesting tools given by the post-processor of GID, which allow us to analyze the results of different multiscale models performed for the stents. For future steps, we would like to consider the interaction between the stents and the vessels. In this way, we developed another application in GID called stenosis, which allows us to define an artery with a narrow portion accounting for the stenosis pathology. In this video, you can see the different parameters that we can set in order to obtain the best geometry. All these parameters can be related to medical images of specific patients, so you can create the models taking into account particular anatomical properties. For instance, we can change the diameter of the stenosis, narrowing it, or, on the contrary, making it broader, as you can see in this slide. In consistency with clinical outcomes, we can choose different stenosis types, such as circular or spherical stenosis. It can also be created with a triangular shape, as shown here. Finally, we can choose a trapezoidal stenosis type. Here we have all the stenosis options integrated in the application, one of them symmetric and the other non-symmetric. The next step will we integrate these basic geometries with the stent in order to create a model considering their interaction. Finally, I would like to say we are very grateful to all people working for Git who are always developing useful tools and improving the software. We would like to thank also to Anaconda Biomed who allowed us to develop this work in the context of a collaborative project. Thanks all for your attention and if you have any doubts, feel free to contact us.